From Gotham City, the dating capital of the world, it's the Dating Game! Today's bachelorette is a psychiatrist and also a head case, Dr. Harleen Quinzel. Hi! So tell me, Dr. Quinn, what do you look for in a man? I like a guy who's confident, spontaneous, and can make me laugh. Well then you're in luck with our bachelors. Let's say hi to them now. Hi. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, poseability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and for the month of January, we're gonna spotlight Batman's arch nemesis, the clown prince of crime, the Joker. What if the Joker was actually three different men? This is the premise of the controversial Three Jokers, written by Jeff Johns and illustrated magnificently by Jason Fabick. So far, we've looked at the clown and the comedian. Today, we look at the mastermind of the trio, the criminal. Starting off the packaging, and since this is the third Joker of the Three Jokers, I don't have a whole lot more to say about the box. The product shot's pretty cool, though. And for those who are interested, here's the barcode. Incidentally, this one is called Classic. A classic box for a classic criminal. For packaging, I'm giving this Joker, one whole point. Moving on to presentation, and just like the others, the criminal stands at seven and a quarter inches from the top, and I absolutely love this face sculpt. Not only is it one of the only Joker figures that isn't smiling, but it also kind of looks like that fan art of Willem Dafoe. And even though the expression's different, it's obviously the same person's head, which means that all of them are interchangeable. Remember how with the clown I complained about the two different colors and I wish they just would have picked one? Here, I've got the opposite problem where I feel like there's just sort of too much of one color. I think it's because the shirt's white, so there aren't any contrasting colors. On the other hand, this is a very good tribute to the very first appearance of the Joker. And oddly enough, I can't think of a single action figure ever made based off of his first appearance. There is one small detail, however, that really takes me out of this figure. The knees. We've seen the knees not match the rest of the leg before, but this is a whole other level. I've put him as far from the camera as I possibly can, and be honest, those knees are all you're looking at. Aside from that, there's just a simplicity to this that I really like. I really like the buttoned-up jacket and how tight the suit is. In the comic, the criminal tells the Red Hood that he was the first Joker, and honestly, this figure kind of has an elder statesman quality. That said, I do have a problem with the jacket kind of riding up, and I keep having to push it back down. The jacket and head, by the way, are the only newly sculpted pieces for this figure. The arms and hands are the same, as are the torsos, legs, and spats. I'm honestly really impressed at just how distinct each one of these figures looks. What makes this Joker is the creepy, incredible head sculpt. The rest of the figure, while fine, is almost incidental. Don't get me wrong, it's great to finally get a Golden Age Joker in our collection, but those knees are just unforgivable. For presentation, I'm giving the criminal half a point. Moving on to posability, and that's going to be the biggest difference between this and the clown. Starting off with the head, and it's on a dumbbell joint, up this much, down this much, pretty decent tilt, and all the way around. Swivel hinge shoulders raise up over... Oh. If you're curious, that's what the inside of his arm socket looks like. Fun fact, when I tried to move this one, it broke off too. Anyway, his arms raise up 90 degrees. You've already seen the rotator cuff, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you the bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and the nicely hidden McFarlane wrist balls. They swivel and hinge. Unfortunately, that very fashionable jacket does get in the way. That said, he can still arch back a fair distance and also hunch forward. Just be warned that the pants do bunch up. And of course, he can also turn side to side. Below the waist, he has McFarlane hips. They kick out this far. Pretty great spread and a pretty fair amount of swivel. Moving even further down, he's got double jointed knees, toe articulation, and ankles that hinge, swivel, and pivot. Because this Joker is meant to be an older man, you don't really have to put him in lots of crazy poses, but it's nice to know that you can. For posability, I'm giving the criminal one whole point. Before we continue, don't forget that we're still giving away a three Jokers comedian to one lucky subscriber. More information on that at the end of the video. Moving on to playability, and the criminal comes with a trading card and a figure stand. If you want to read what it says, pause here. Side note, what do you guys do with your trading? cards. I just kind of keep mine in a stack on my review bench. I occasionally use them like an apple crate for action figure photography. Anyway, back to the figure. Naturally, he comes with a crowbar. I'm just kidding. He actually comes with this pretty sweet cane. Zooming on in and you can see all the detail. It's even got a little J on there. He can't clutch it in his left hand, but you can still pose him with it. But playability is more than just tangents about trading cards. It's about how well your figure plays with others. Starting off with some 5-inch scale figures and did you ever see the music video to Come to Daddy by Aphex Twin? Here he is with some 
animated series style jokers. Here he is with a couple of six inch. For a DC direct comparison, here's a few of those. This, by the way, is the only other joker in my collection that isn't smiling. Here's a couple of McFarlands. Here he is with the McFarlane toys, Mortal Kombat 11. And here are all three of the three jokers. Joker pile! I unfortunately don't have any figures of Batman based on his first appearance, but here's a couple black and gray ones. For a blue and gray comparison, here he is with the Batman from The Killing Joke and Nightfall. For a more cinematic Batman, here he is with the Michael Keaton by NECA. Again, Force Perspective will be your ally. But for something a bit different, here he is with the Snyder Cut Batfleck. Here he is with Batgirl in the red hood. For a Harley Quinn comparison, here's a few of her. That does raise a good question, though. Where does Harley fit into the three Jokers? I think we all know where they fit in, but... For real, though, does she know that there's three of them? And if so, are they all in some kind of polyamorous relationship together? Or is she only with one of them? And if so, which one? Since he's the one based off the killing joke, and that's the one that had a family, my money would be on the comedian. Oh, and if you're curious, the Suicide Squad King Shark wave will be my next review. For a relative scale comparison, here he is with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And of course, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. Mm -hmm. And now, it's time for some head swaps. If they can share Harley, they can share a mug. First up, we've got the comedian head on the criminal body. This looks really cool and really creepy, but is it just me or does he kind of look like Reverend Kane from Poltergeist 2? Let me in. Here's the criminal head on the Mortal Kombat 11 body. Conversely, here's the Mortal Kombat head on the criminal body. It's kind of cool, but I don't like it as much. Here's the criminal head on the clown body. Again, it's just a different expression for the head we've already gotten. And on that subject, here's the clown head on the criminal body. This really captures that first appearance comic book energy, but once again, the showstopper is the criminal head on the comedian body. Matt Reeves, if you're out there watching this, please make this the template for your version of the Joker in the next Batman movie. Happy as I am to be getting a cane and not just another crowbar, I do wish that he came with a bit more, but that's okay. The playability of this figure is really about how you can mix and match him with the other two. A shattered, jokerized version of the Red Hood helmet would have been cool, but the Joker's enough all on his own. For playability, I'm giving the criminal one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. I caught this criminal at Target for $19.99, which honestly I would have paid for just the head. That said, it is light on accessories and does have a few quality control issues, but even if they did miss some opportunities with this release, it's okay. McFarlane will do what McFarlane always does build a better Joker. For price, I'm giving the criminal one whole point for a grand total of 4.5 out of 5. We may have finished our look at the three Jokers, but there's still plenty of Joker month left and plenty of time for you to enter to win your very own comedian. Just go to this video on the Mortal Kombat 11 Joker for all the official rules and details. Don't delay though, the deadline is January 31st, 2022 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.